Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? Doing great, Andy. How are you? I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm being, I mean, looking forward to this time with you. And uh, it's been a while. Uh, I really want to immerse myself in whatever you carry because I've been watching the videos. I've been really, really amazingly blessed. There's such a peace and, and, and rest and restoration in those videos. And I'm excited to be talking to you today. So uh, I think it's a journey, nothing that we see there. I can clearly see that you being in a journey and I want to explore a little bit about that journey today with uh, those people listening to us, those people watching on, on YouTube. And I think there's a lot in you that can actually gush out into our audience today and bless and it really like those people that are really wanting to have a breakthrough in their lives or, or you know, um, we talk about resilience. That's what we talk about here and, and coming out of difficult times to get momentum and, and get going with their lives. So I want to start today with you just asking who is Michael mostly and a little bit about you and your background. Yeah, thanks so much, Andy, man. It's so, it's so great to be on your show. And I love what you guys are doing as well. Um, how exciting to see um, the promotion of wealth. So much of um, the world's being really on individuals and their success stories and, and uh, people who care for other people. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really honored to be here. My name is Michael Mosley, everyone. Thank you for having me on the show. And um, I am happily married to my wife, Michelle. I have two children, uh, Noah and Sophia. They are beautiful in the United States. Um, I have uh, a, really a history professionally of, of being in business. You know, I'm educated in the international business and in finance. I've been involved in medical devices and the introduction of technology internationally. Um, I think in about, two, about 2010, I had a, a very beautiful experience where I would call it a bit of an awakening. Um, I was set free for, from some things that really um, occupied my mind and my heart the majority of, of my life. In 2010, um, I was set free from those things, and um, my my heart really just be, it was this word that came. It was I told my wife. I said, "There's something more than soccer practice, church on Sunday, you know, a regular life that was so organized, controlled, and safe for us." And so, in that moment, we really began to pursue a different life. And so, at that time. Um, we were doing a lot of surgical missions, which, you know, where we would go into other countries and do surgery for people and help them. We did this all over the world. And so we began to flush that out, meaning we began to, to take a more serious approach to it and say, should we be doing this full time? And that led us to Africa, where we, where we moved and lived in, in East Africa for three years. And I ran a business there, uh, international business, and um, it was a great experience for me and my family. And then we, uh, we moved to California uh, after being there where I continued to push into um, really some, some deep truths that, I, you know, I've always been someone, Andy, that I, I like to get to the core of things mm -hmm. and then allow uh, my, nat you know, my giftedness and, and natural, um, uh, you know, I guess really gifts that I carry allow me as an individual to explore from that core truth. And yeah. so that, that's really what we spent time pursuing for a few years. And from that really brought us to, to where we are today. I, I want to, let me just break it up a little bit because you said you went to Africa and, and came back. I mean, I think there's a massive gap from going to the U S into Africa and then back to the U S I tell, because I'm telling you this because I, I've lived in different countries and yeah. I'm never the same person after yeah. I go and come back. How was that process of going? I mean, going is normally a, a cultural shock when we arrive 
And when you come back, you might have another shock, culture shock of readjusting. How was that process for you, Michael, and your family, of course? Yeah, I, I think that um, what comes to heart, there's a lot of ways to answer that question, but I think what really comes to my heart is um, the, the idea of what is your purpose. Mm. You know, I went to Africa to be a hero. We all want to be a hero. We all want to save the day and help someone. And, you know, that was my desire. It, 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 it wasn't so much selfish as it was. It was just I wanted to be that, right? And so in going to Africa, I was willing to give up everything I knew and every, everything I had to go and serve other people and do that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do that, I assumed that identity in, when I was there in Africa. And so adapting to the culture, rejecting my old culture, fully immersing myself in the culture of East Africa, and then to leave that again and drop that and come back into the United States without um, the identity of a professional, right? Because that's what I had before. I left, that I, I left that idea, right? And I went there to be a servant, if you will, a missionary in East Africa. That became my identity. And then to leave that and then go back to, back to the United States into a place that is, um, you know, promotes uh, capitalism and success and the American dream and all these things. And so when, I, when you answer the, answer the question, I would say it was harder to go from Africa to the U.S. than it was to transition from and leave everything in the U.S. to go to Africa. Mm. And, I and think partially because I loved it, you know? Yeah. And I think one, 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 once you're back, and that happened to me uh, a few times, you realize that you changed, but people around you, they changed. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And then you start, some of the values that you had before, you don't have anymore. And right. some people might not recognize you or even understand you anymore did you have that experience yeah absolutely absolutely we did um it was such a dramatic change when we came back that i mean it's not a it's not a happy story right as mm -hmm. far as relationships go meaning that mm -hmm. you know um out of sight out of mind but that's not I think that may be a little bit more of the American culture, right? I feel like I held on to more friends in Africa when I returned mm -hmm. to the U.S. Than, than I held on to Amer Americans when I went to Africa. It's such an amazing you know? experience. Because yeah. I, I, yeah, I, but, but for us, it's, it's all positive because um, the journey the Lord, uh, you know, that our, that our God has us on is is dynamic it's wondrous it's beautiful we are created to create you know we are created to love and we are created to live in abundance and 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 the, as our life goes on we learn the definition of abundance right mm -hmm. sometimes it's external sometimes it's internal you know sometimes it's within a community of family and sometimes it's it's you know as an individual so there's a lot of different um, uh, uh, experiences in our journey, and I would just say that um, none of it, none of my journey, I resent. It's all such mm -hmm. a, such great value and, and humil humility, to be honest. That's, that's a powerful thing. That's a, that's a powerful thing. You just said that uh, you don't resent none of your journey. I mean, so a lot of people no. out there have those heaviness and and some traumas or some guilty, uh, some something from the past that they held on to, and then they regret. That's a beautiful thing what you say now. Yeah, I think what I would share about that is um, is not that um, a, a lot of people say, uh, "Well, I'm not going to let my my past get me down. I'm not going to." And I, you know, where they actually use energy today to manage an experience of the past. Mm -hmm. And for me, I've found a great joy in the present moment. Right. Yeah. And I and I know that I wouldn't be in the moment without the past. Mm -hmm. 
but I don't carry the past with me in a place to, to let it actually occupy my heart in the present moment. That may not be for everyone, but for me, it's very free and allows me to be uh, to adjust and to be mobile and to be free and flexible. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I know a lot of a lot of people um, allow certain things to take up residence in in their mind and in their heart. It's like forgiveness, right? We all yeah. know about it, right? We've all experienced that part. And a lot of us say, well, I'm just never going to forgive as if we are, uh, you know, as if we, when we do, we actually uh, take something away from us in the present moment. And actually, that's true. What we take away from ourselves in the present moment by forgiving the past is, is burden. We take away burden from ourselves in the present moment when we do forgive. You know, exactly. <laughs> no, absolutely. So, I, I have experienced so many times in my life that the power of forgiveness and the time, the power of letting go and blessing uh, your past and the people from, you know, in, in, in your in your life at that time that is not anymore and let things go and then just embrace the future, embrace the moment and living in the moment. I, I want to take you. I I know a bit of, about you, but one of the things that I love about you is the artistic in you. I, can, I would like to mm -hmm. go into that now from the journey that you just you opened up for, to us now. Where 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 does that artistic or how 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 that developed? Where does it come from? Were you always into art and painting? How did that happen to you? Yeah, I, I think it's a great question, and I and I really hope that um, that I can articulate it well. But I, I would say this: ever since I was uh, a, a young boy, I always I had a heart to please other people, to see other people um, joyful. Right? Um, mm -hmm. I like the way it made me feel to see other people joyful, and so. I then pursued things that people praised me for. People praised me always in business, in sales, in, in, in putting together combinations and deals and businesses and so on and so forth. So I always pursued this part of my life. When I was young and I would sing in music class, the teacher would ask me to stop. You know, I mean, that's the way it was, you know, it just was part of me that or in art, there was never any um, reward uh, from the praise of man. So I never pursued any of those things. And so the creative component in me was used in business in a way without identifying that that's what it was. So it was always this hidden hum in my heart that that while it was there i wasn't able to give attention to it mm -hmm. to cultivate it to care for it to get coached in it to make it better right the way that came about in me is really quite humbling i entered a, a time in my life where um i knew that there was something beyond myself that I was being called to. Mm -hmm. And to accomplish that, I needed some guidance. And the guidance that I found to lead me um, to pursue that which I had no idea of what to do came spiritually to me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so to have a conversation and or to have relationship or to be led by something greater than myself, mm -hmm. it meant that I needed to be quiet. Well, in that quietness, in that meditative state of, of being silent, I began to get direction. But the direction that I received was not to follow things that I understood, but rather to pursue things that I didn't. And so it was quite comical because it was like I was a child again being taught how to do something new. And so what, where I was led was literally to a paint store to buy very inexpensive paints and a very inexpensive pad of paper and to begin painting with, by following the brush stroke 
and the color that I heard in my heart. So I'm being very serious. Let me try to yeah. understand this. I mean, you were an adult already at that time, right? Yeah. 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 And you, you had never done any art before, art class. Because never. I see you, you painting and say, wow, this guy's amazing. But it was just like, came out of nowhere. Never. Like Never. Like literally, like two years ago, uh, I, I, I this actually happened three years ago. Um, I started with my first stroke of paint. Wow. And, this is and, and, and it was just listening in my heart to, to the direction that I was being given. And the way I interpreted that was this. Mm -hmm. That which was leading me desired such an intimate relationship that if I would follow and, and, and respond, that where I was going was to a place of truth mm -hmm. and to a place of abundance. Mm. Um, wow. And you would say, well, what do you mean? Did you think, did you think it was going to make you rich? No. I mean, I just knew that what I desired in my heart, which was truth and abundance, that following the, what was leading me spiritually was going to take me there. I thought painting and still maybe do think painting is just like uh, an area of development for me because I'm doing something that I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm dependent upon direction to do it. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is like the inspiration that you receive. I've, I've noticed that the way you speak, I don't feel any, uh religious connotation but you're highly spiritual and yes. i can feel that the path that you're going is uh, for me i'm not in any particular religion but for me the other side of religion is relationship right yeah because yeah. for me really most religion and and with all due respect people who are part of any religion but it, in my experience it led me to dogma right and 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 then when I discover that is something higher, above and beyond, and this higher consciousness and this fatherly consciousness that we have, yeah, I think it led me to relationship and discover who I am, back to nature, back to my nature, and right. back to connectedness. And I can feel that when I watch your videos and I listen to what you've uh, you, you've written there, I feel such such a peace. Amen. Yeah, it's good. And yeah. and then the other thing that a comment that you left one in, in on a Instagram page and and I really blessed me a lot because I was asking a question to the community and uh, because uh, let me just say to this for many years of my life I had this when super corporate or business I had this Sunday anxiety that M Monday was arriving I don't know if some of our audience some of our listen might have this thing that goes inside of your heart that the Monday is coming and you start getting right. agitated. And for me now, since I, I started this path has been all changed and I had to relearn how to live through the Sunday because sometimes, many times I work, my, my work started on Sunday. And, and now I like to get myself into a, a, a very much a good space, a good vibe, either hiking or being in nature yeah. or painting yeah. and talking to people, whatever it is. So I asked the question, how do you do? And he said, rest and gratitude. And that blessed my heart because I think those are such a key element. I would like to stop now and allow you to take us through rest and gratitude. Why those things are so key? Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. I think that um, something very simple that drives me into rest and gratitude are two words. Thank you. Mm. When my heart is turned towards thankfulness, authentic thankfulness, thank you, it is a finishing point and a starting point it is a it brings me down to a place of i have received and i am mm. and giving it it, yeah. it it's it's a it's a beautiful 
place of neutral exchange of love. Thank you. And I believe that I've discovered that I don't do things so that I can rest. I rest so that I can do things. I try to carry my rest into my day. I position my heart in a place of rest as if I'm already been rewarded with that gift of rest. Rest is a gift. And if we receive it as a gift, then you didn't do anything to get it. You just got it. It was just given to you. Mm. And see, when we go walk into a place without the agenda of, of more loving, more kind, more gentle, more forgiving with the people that we engage with. So for me, putting my heart in a place of rest with thankfulness before I begin, gratitude is obviously in that thankfulness as well, right? And gratitude sometimes is birthed through having nothing and then having something, right? Because we have an experience and we're like, I remember when I drove around in Africa and man, it was dusty. And we would drive for miles on these roads. It was like having a boxing match with your kidneys, you know? Yeah. I mean, like crazy miles. And, just, <laughs> and I was so grateful to have a cup of tea. Yeah. Man, <laughs> at the end of the day, I didn't care if it was perfect or I, it was just the cup of tea. That's it, yeah. a cup of tea. And the gratitude in my heart, it, that's what, I know it sounds simple, but, but it is simple. And I would say the place to birth gratitude and rest from is a place of simplicity. Yes, Don't make it so complex, right? Like you walk into a place to get a massage, you got to get your hair done, you got to get this done, you got to have just the right music, you got to have this, you got to have, it's easy to have rest and gratitude when you control your environment. Mm -hmm. But, but the key is not that. The key is not that because that's wonderful. But look, when we're in a time of trouble or we're challenged or, you know, it's Monday, yeah. <laughs> right? I, then we need to be able to turn our heart. And, the, and this is the key. Mm -hmm. The way you turn your heart away from the anxiety of Monday morning mm -hmm. is you turn your heart for one moment by saying thank you. No, absolutely. And yeah. I, think, I think that rest and thankfulness and gratitude leads us towards hope, right? right. So the more you feel your heart of gratitude, the more you're hopeful right. of the things right. that are coming to you because you believe and you trust that they are going to be good things, right? right? And right. Uh, I think I, that I, is I, the experience I have. I, I love it. You know, hope is something that if I could just talk a little bit about hope. You know, I know. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Because let me just say this. I, I, I'm going to bring all our listeners and audience um, to that video where you are in this burnt out, burnt place, you know, that you have coal and burnt tree. That was an amazing video. We want to put up on, on our Thank channel you. and we're going to promote that. That is, I see that there is hope coming out of the burning woods and, the, you know, can you take us through a little bit of that? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, you know, the way we, we were, I, was, I remember exactly where I was. I was with my, uh, one of my, my partners and um, very talented young man. Um, his name is River Cahill. And, and he told me one time in the midst of the California fires, he said, Michael, I think there's an opportunity. And, um, you know, when two people, you know, it makes me very emotional to think mm -hmm. of it because um, when he said there was an opportunity, it wasn't an opportunity to take away. It was an opportunity to inspire people in a supernatural way. And that's the way we approached it. The whole state was on fire and we went and we spent days hiking in this burnt ash place, creating this video to show people that everyone, regardless of who you are, what status, what place, what religion, what color, what creed, it doesn't matter that if you are a created human being, that there has been something 
that has been put inside of you that's supernatural. It's, 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 it's beyond natural. Absolutely. And it's called, it's called hope. It's called mm -hmm. hope. Mm -hmm. And this seed, this seed of hope that's been put inside of you, no matter whether the fire hits it, no matter whether the flood hits it, no matter any circumstance, whatever it is, it has been put there. The, this, is the, this is the real, and I would say trickery, because, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, it's not finger pointing, but I believe that sometimes in our life, we are allured away from a true source to a temporary source, something temporary to fuel or to supply water to that seed of hope. Something like material, something that can be taken from us, something that can be that can be burnt up. That was the story, right? That something that don't worry if everything has been burnt away from you. What's the one thing that remains inside of you? It's mm -hmm. supernatural hope, right? Mm -hmm. And when we and when we allow that hope that's in of in us to be watered with by the one by the Creator who put it inside of us. Mm -hmm then it grows and it blossoms and it becomes a tree with a lot of fruit. And that fruit is then eaten by other people, right? And they are blessed. Mm -hmm. It's nice, beautiful. There's nice. this one. Really beautiful. <laughs> there's, That's amazing. There's this, um, there's this, so I think a lot in, um, Kind of patterns, right? Uh, and uh, one of the patterns or thought processes that really brings me peace is are three words that I see as very cyclical. It's just, it, they run connected together. And the first word is love. And the second word is create. Mm -hmm. And the third word is live. And I believe that those words in that motion of becoming aware of love that, that, that we love because we were first loved mm -hmm. by love. And that when, when, when we come into that revelation of love in us, it inspires us to create because we were created. Mm -hmm. So we all naturally yeah. have this gift to create. But it's difficult to create when you don't have a revelation that you're loved. It's, mm -hmm. it's difficult, right? There's, it's the tension, you know, but when you know that you're loved, you're inspired to create. Yeah, and, and I was I was thinking, um, I was going to ask you this question. Um, where does that inspiration comes from? I was like here to wait for. Okay, I need to ask you this question. How do you get your inspiration? Like networking with people, sitting uh, in a place, or walking. How does that come to you? Because it's so beautiful seeing you painting and and, and going and creating. But where does that come from? Yeah, I, um, for, for me personally, um, that inspiration comes from what I have found to be a singular truth, mm -hmm. the, the, the one truth. And for me, that's from God, my mm -hmm. Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I've been given access to him to hear his voice. Mm -hmm. by his Holy Spirit. Mm. And, and the Holy Spirit has been given to me by my Father's Son, Jesus Christ. And mm -hmm. that is my belief, that I, I have experienced that gift, I have received that gift, and I live under the direction of that gift. And so I am a living testimony. I'm not playing. I don't sometimes or sometimes not like i know that i know because of the evidence in my life and mm -hmm. a way i was built you know i need i was built for intimacy mm -hmm. I, I i i would i would i would believe we were all built but i will say for me i was built for an intimate connection to be to to, to walk in that intimate relationship to respond and to bring pleasure to the one that I'm being led by, mm -hmm. but also to give pleasure to the one that I'm being led by, right? Mm -hmm. To receive pleasure and to give pleasure. And it's this supernatural fulfillment that the, the words that we use like peace, 
-hmm. A word that we might use like joy. Mm -hmm. a, a word that we might use like right standing, to be in the right standing that where mm -hmm. no accusation to you and to your character. Do you know, we all make mistakes. I'm not saying I'm not perfect, but you know, you know when your mother would tell you how beautiful you are and you say, oh, mom, you're just saying that, right? Because mm -hmm. you're my mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's the language that I hear from my father in heaven, mm -hmm. you know, but he is the creator of the universe. So when he says, you are right in my eyes, I believe it. Mm. That is amazing because, I mean, in our communities, of course, we're open to people from, from all backgrounds and, and experiences. And that's what we want to explore with Momentum when we when we're delving deep into spirituality. And I, I respect your journey and I respect the, the fact that um, you carry that belief. But for me, the most important thing when I speak to people like you, Michael, is not that you believe in something, but... It's your belief bringing something that is positive to people's life. Whichever yeah. belief people might have in this world today, I always ask the question, is it positive? Is it, is it adding a, a vibe, energy, love, peace, hope, gratitude, thankfulness? And it's beautiful what you're saying because I can clearly see when you paint and the words that you put through and i watch all your videos that you put out there so please keep putting keep posting that because it's really blessing me uh that there is not a message there is a dogma behind or or a bunch of set of laws and and, and guidelines and it's 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 pure love and and flow Right. And, and it, it drips that sort of peace and hope. And, and I mean, it, it, one feels fully restored after watching those videos. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing your experience. My question to you as we drawing close to the end is where do we go from here with what you're doing? So what is Michael mostly doing? with all the artistic and inspiration and all the spirituality, everything that you carry, what, how, 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 how are we gonna intend to bring that to the world? That's, it's good. I love, I love what you said, Andy, and I, I just wanna, I just wanna focus in on that just for a moment about the flow, you know, in the proof, right? You know, it's, it, I, you, you honored my process and, and my belief, um, but the question is, what's flowing out of you, right? Yeah. And you, do you know that that which flows out of me is what is affirming my belief, right? Because, lit, uh, you know, rivers, I would just use the word rivers of living water are flowing out of me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they're not, river, they're not rivers I have seen. They're not rivers I am copying, right? They are, mm -hmm. They're just an expression that other people, I find them drinking the water. And, and I see them to find um, a joy and peace and love. And they're not dependent upon the water that's flowing from me, but rather it activates something in them. Mm -hmm. And that is, for me, for Michael, that is what affirms the the tr the truth of what I believe in right mm -hmm. uh, is because of the sustainability if you will of the love that flows from me to mm -hmm. activate other people in a journey of their of theirs right and I, and I guess you you yeah. been you been having the feedback from more people than I because I am sure other people are are being blessed but have have you been listening to 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 those people that are being blessed also to via this yeah message? it's yeah, it's it it it's awesome. It, it's humbling to hear. Um, it just keeps me quiet and my eyes, mm. you know, that singular focus, right? And so, when you say where are we going, I, I my heart is to uh, is is to not um, is to not be um, the man of God, but to point to the God of men, mm -hmm. and, and 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 so. I, my heart is, I believe I'm being led to, to build community, to share things with intimately, right? Mm -hmm. And, and to do that in a little bit of in the way that you're doing it, right? Maybe with multiple people. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
but to be honest, it's, it's, I'm discovering it as I go, right? We, we have, a, I have content that topics that, um, that I have had in my heart that are very specific in a, in a, in a sequential order that I have recorded that people can watch and enjoy um, and they can be like, what in the world is in this guy's heart? You know, like, because honestly, sometimes the things that come can be pretty, you know, mystical, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. if things are that way and, and people, I mean, if you have an elephant in the room and no one can take a bite and we're all just looking at the elephant, <laughs> what good is, you know what I mean? It's like, so you have to, you have to get things in a place where people can understand and, and, and consume them. And so I'm learning that. Mm. So my, so I'm super excited about um, the people that are coming around me to support me in areas where I am weak. You know, mm -hmm. the things I don't have, they're coming, they're helping me. Um, even with a venue, a place, um, wow, I've been good. given a beautiful, a beautiful hundred year old uh, chapel to work in and to mm -hmm. paint in where there's no preacher. So you, no you're actually religion. in the middle of some, some, some videoing today, right? You, you guys are yeah, filming I, there today. I, absolutely. So it's, you know, and it's, it's really kind of funny that here I am, you know, my, my heart is like yours, you know, I, I, I didn't I kind of ran away from the religion, right? I was like, ah, I, I don't want to do that. Um, and here I am, someone's given me a studio inside of an old chapel. So, you know, mm. but I think it's an opportunity to love people um, in a dynamic situation. So, so we're making videos, we're making the inspirational shorts to stimulate something in the hearts of people. And I think the next step for us is to, is to build community, right? Mm -hmm. Is to say who wants to spend some time together mm -hmm. um, yeah, being encouraged and, and, and allowing us to pour into people individually, right? Mm -hmm. And to be like, how can we help you? How, how can we encourage you mm -hmm. um, and inspire you to do? Because this is the point. Mm -hmm. If everybody just watches me do what I do and nobody else is inspired to create and to live and to love, then mm -hmm. what I'm doing to me, exactly. honestly, is, is, is just of this world. But mm -hmm. if, if what I'm doing activates that seed of hope in other people and all of a sudden, how do you make a rainbow? You don't make a rainbow with one color of Michael. You, a, a blue you make a, a, a rainbow with many colors so exactly. i want to inspire the, the color in other people because they say hey that crazy guy michael he did it he mm -hmm. he, he could do it and and I, I i can do it too and mm -hmm. so this is the this is the, the pattern that, that we want to go in right mm -hmm. is, is mm -hmm. one that is is continually activating other people absolutely and, um, yeah, we we are gonna we, we of course we um we're gonna get all all your channels. We're gonna uh bring uh, close to uh, our community. We're gonna direct people to what you're doing and uh, encourage them to uh, connect with you. Of course, you you also have your paintings, right? Uh, can people yeah. access some of your paintings? Are they on website or? Yeah, yeah, I've got um. So we started to build a gallery of some paintings that we've you know, that we've obviously collected in time. And um, they can go to our website, which is dreamscapeoftheheart.com. Mm -hmm. I love, the, I love this know, word, dreamscape, dreamscape of the heart. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you about that? Can I tell you where that yeah, came yeah. from? Because it's really go precious. It, it's on. really precious. You know, I, I got a time in my life when I remembered all of my dreams. And they were so powerful. I was actually seeing them play out in my life. It was crazy. And then the dreams stopped and I had no more dreams, but I kept waking up every morning full, like I was fulfilled in the same way I did when I woke up and remembered these very wonderful dreams. It was strange. And I began to wonder, what is that? And one morning I woke up and I heard in my heart, you have been in that place. And I said, what in, in my, I heard this, right? You know, you hear inside your heart. You know, I heard you have been in this place with me. And I said, where? And I heard in the dreamscape of your heart. And I mm -hmm. thought, oh, that's right. What a perfect place to be <laughs> is in the dreamscape of your heart. So mm -hmm. that's what I want to, to tell you, Amazing. Andy. You have a dreamscape. In yeah, your heart. That's right. And I want to blow on it. I want to 
I want to point to it. I want to get excited about it. Mm -hmm. I, that's my heart. So that, so that then you come and you say, Michael, I found this mm -hmm. in the dreamscape of my heart. Mm, that's, that's amazing. That's such that's an where the inspiration. Name came. Yeah. Such an inspiration. Yeah. Such, yeah. Th there is an explosion of creativity there. I think we are barely saying it's just the, the start of that of that movement of that community. I can I can yes. feel it that it's going to grow and it's going to bless so many people. That is what I feel in my heart, and it's blessing yeah. me. And that's what I wanted to bring you in a, in a show today and expose you. you to our community, to our audience also. Uh, we, we have people coming from all, all, all walks of life. We have scientists, we have uh, nutritionists, we have uh, uh, people in fitness. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a community that is built around resilience. And I, I didn't want this to go away without the beat that you bring, because I believe that is such a powerful inspiration with all the, you know, the love that you carry, you know, the belief and, 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 uh, and the spirituality that you carry too and your art and uh, you know what you're doing with the videos that I mean is amazing. So thank you so much today, uh, Michael. I really appreciate the time, appreciate the time in between your recording and uh, I'm looking forward to the next video. And I, I think before we go, you said you spent, you spent hours writing the, the script, right? Can you talk a little bit to how is the process of creating those uh, scripts? Yeah, I, I can because I think it's, it'll be encouraging to people. It's something that I discovered that I didn't realize. Um, scripts and things that we hear spontaneously are not always to be shared. Sometimes they're, they're given to us, in, deep inspirations are given to us for a time of meditation, for us to quiet our hearts and to grow in ourselves, to grow in our maturity. And so for me in the, in the scripts that I get, they don't come in the, in, the, in the version that you see. They come in a very mystical, deep language that must be meditated upon. I must ask questions of myself. I must write the things out. And then I must start to also include you, Andy, and other people in my heart. And when I do, compassion comes in my heart. And then I start to filter the words and the things I've written with compassion. It's like really trying to communicate a message to your child that is so important. You want them to understand. You take patience. You take time. And you really just want to deliver it in such a way that it's a pleasure for them to, 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 to experience you. Mm -hmm. And so this is really the way it goes. You know, and it's, it, yeah, the amount of time and, and the amount of drafts and the amount of efforts and all those things they're in there, but I and, and it's to... crafted, isn't it? It's, cra it's almost like he was sculpting the script. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's like chipping, starting with chipping. a block. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm not alone in that process. You know, it's at it, it, a very key point. I I bring in my mother used to say, "Don't bring too many cooks in the kitchen." You know, and so <laughs> at a, at a certain point, I, I I invite those people I trust. Very few in this process to to give me feedback and to, you know I ask them do you understand am I am I communicating this message do you feel the flow and and then they they can encourage me um, in the way that uh, they feel inspired to do that and it's it's a wonderful thing and and so I'm not alone wow. in it um, just alone in certain certain parts of it. So yeah, it's a community that does it really. And, and, it's a community and, and of us. just yeah. off 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 record now, you like cooking, right? Love it. Love, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned cooking now. I think I don't know if you come from a cooking family. I came from a cooking family. I love cooking, and I I, I watched yeah. one of one video. I think you you making something like nice uh, Italian recipe there. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. realized that that uh, one day, who knows, we can meet together. We cook together. Let's see. We, uh, yes, we'll, we'll cook, <laughs> we'll eat, we'll celebrate, we'll do many things. Yes, I'm amazing, man. I mean, come on. You said you come to Brazil. I need to tell you when, it, when I'm next in Brazil. You need to come. I am ready. I would, I, would be, I, would, I would be honored. I would be honored, and uh, and I would come full of joy. That's full amazing. Of joy. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, I'm, uh, ap apologies for today. I'm, I'm not. We're not in the studio. We we're on a tour now. We're in the UK at the moment. We're not back when we in Austria. I have my studio there. But uh, thank you so much yeah. 
for uh, taking the time to be with us and thank your audience or listeners. Uh, keep keep uh, sharing, uh, commenting, leave your comment to us. We want to hear from you and also subscribe to your channels and would love to uh, invite you to be part of what we're doing. And I'm sure we can, some of you might be incredible to have in a program and I'm, I'm sure some of you carry a lot inside of you too. So we want to keep encouraging you and thank you so much for those feedbacks that we're receiving. And uh, we see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Andy. Bless you.